Hey you, I'm Sarah Turner. I'm a freelance medical copywriter and copywriting mentor and I love helping people break into entrepreneurship. So if you are a new entrepreneur and you are freaking out, I've got you. So here's the thing. It is totally understandable that you're freaking out a little bit if you've decided to bet on yourself and take that plunge into entrepreneurship or maybe you're considering it and you're freaking out just at the thought alone. Trust me, I've been there and I've worked with so many people who have been on that cusp of taking that leap of faith themselves. It's a really exciting and scary place to be. And so I wanna talk to you a little bit about that because I have some tips, some ideas, and a ton of experience in helping people through this transition. And so I know that I can help you too. The first thing I wanna say is that what you need to get started or at least to take that next big step in the right direction is just a little bit of courage. And I want you to remember that courage comes first and it's followed by confidence. So confidence follows courage. That is something that is so important to keep in mind because all you need is the courage to take the next right step. And if you keep showing up and doing that for yourself, taking so many little baby steps in the right direction, you are eventually going to build confidence. I promise you this from my own personal experience and again through literally helping thousands of people through this process. So remember that confidence follows courage and courage is what you need to get started. So the next thing is, is it's totally normal to feel out of your depth. It is imperfect action and courage that's gonna get you started and gonna get you through those first few months. Because anytime we start something new, there is a ton of fear and anxiety that comes with it. And really truly, it's a sign that you're growing. Don't wait until you feel ready to start because if you wait until you feel ready, you might be waiting forever. Truly, nobody feels ready when they start. And if they do, then they've waited too long. Truly, truly, truly. So it's totally normal to feel in a little over your head. And I like to remind people to just remind yourself that this means that you're growing. It means you're stepping outside of your comfort zone. And yes, you're gonna feel a little bit of that imposter syndrome and that might be a little freaky, but just keep in mind that that is a sign of growth. In fact, through every step of growth that you experience as an entrepreneur, you're gonna come up against imposter syndrome. You're gonna feel like you're a fraud or maybe you think things like, I have no right to be here, I shouldn't be doing this, or people are gonna find me out or whatever it is, all the crazy fears that come with imposter syndrome, that shows up in a different way throughout the process. And each time you get better at recognizing it for what it is, hey, imposter syndrome, I see you, I recognize you, this feeling is not new to me, the better you get at recognizing it and then just addressing it. And the way I mean addressing it is just by noticing that it's there. Maybe it's butterflies in your stomach. Maybe it's racing thoughts. You know, when you say, okay, I know imposter syndrome is here and that means that I'm growing. Every time you get better at that, it's going to get easier for you to spot it and for you to not let it run the show. Truly, that's one of the best ways that you can push back against that feeling. The next thing I wanna remind you is that you have an infinite amount of resources available to you. The world is filled with resources. The internet is full of it. Truly, we have so many more opportunities available to us now more than ever, more than there were even in the last five years, in the last 10 years. And this has made accessibility to entrepreneurship at an all-time high, which is one of my favorite things because it means that there are so many new ways of participating in the job market and how you design your life than ever before, truly. So keep in mind that you have access to an incredible amount of free information online. So use it. So the next piece of advice I have for you is to adopt a forever student mindset. The reason that this is helpful is that it leaves you open and curious and it makes it so that you're always willing to learn more, willing to look at new ways of approaching things. And I'm not exaggerating when I say having this mindset is going to serve you far better 
than so many other tools or tricks or techniques that are out there. This leads me to my next advice though. It's about finding a balance between being a forever student and not getting stuck in overconsumption. Overconsumption is fancy procrastination. Let me tell you, I have seen so many people think that as long as I just keep reading and consuming and taking courses and, and just consuming information, then one day I'll feel ready. Which brings me back to my old point, which is you're not going to ever feel 100% ready, so just don't wait for that moment. But overconsumption is totally fr fancy procrastination, and it's going to delay the process of getting started. So you got to find that right balance between being a forever student and taking that action and not getting stuck in overconsumption mode. That is the balance. The next piece of advice I have for you is competition is an illusion, truly. There are very, very few markets where your competition is actually going to hurt your ability to be successful. So consider it an illusion. When you adopt an abundance mindset, meaning you have the attitude that there's plenty of work to go around, your competition no, is no longer competition. It actually could be an opportunity for collaboration and inspiration. And let me tell you, it makes being an entrepreneur when you have this kind of mindset so much more enjoyable. It reduces the amount of fear that like creeps into your day-to-day -day thinking. And sure, you're gonna see tons of people already doing the thing that you really wanna be doing, but that's really okay. In fact, that tells you that there's a market for the thing that you wanna be doing. And nothing can replace how you go about doing whatever it is, you know? You have your unique story and spin on whatever it is you're doing. So do not let competition stop you from starting. The next piece of advice I have for you is that 30 minutes a day will take you so far. It is the power of the compounding effect. Meaning, if you sit down and spend 30 minutes a day on your craft, by the end of a year, you will have accumulated so much knowledge. And it won't even take you a year to get to a place where you're feeling competent enough to kind of take action on whatever it is you're studying or trying to implement. So I always recommend that people sit down and spend only like 30 minutes to an hour a day when they're first getting started, especially if you're doing this alongside a full-time job because that has so much more of an impact than trying to sit down and hammer out eight hours a day. Not only does your energy get drained and your focus is diluted by the end, but it is not as effective as far as I have seen as doing something consistent a little bit out of a time, but for a longer period of time. And if you can just remind yourself that I can do anything for 30 minutes, which you probably can, you're going to make it so much more likely that you get up and do that task that takes you a little bit closer to the next step. Obviously, if you have more time, you should definitely invest more time than 30 minutes a day. But truly, I have had students start side hustles that turn into full-blown careers just by spending 30 minutes a day in like three to six months. So do not underestimate the power of small, consistent actions. This brings me to my next point, which is that we love to glorify college and higher level education. And yes, it is amazing. And there are some skills that really require a college education, but most of them don't. Truly, I do not believe that college is necessary for most people at this point in life. College existed because there was a limited resource for people to gain higher level information. The internet has made so much high quality information accessible to so many different people that you do not need a degree to be an entrepreneur. And that is my next point. Please do not limit yourself if you did not go to college just by the belief that you need a degree to be a successful entrepreneur. There are so many stories of people who have done it without that. That is one of the biggest collective self-limiting beliefs I think our culture has right now. And again, I'm just gonna reiterate it one last time. You really do not need a degree to be a successful entrepreneur. And you do not need a degree in whatever area of expertise you're going into. You can learn something else, I promise you. Finally, my last point is ask questions and ask the ones that feel and seem dumb. One of the things I love about being copywriter, it is my job to ask questions. So I 
ask my clients questions about their business that are seemingly obvious. And this mindset has actually trickled into my real life. So I ask questions and it's funny because not that long ago, there was an example where I asked an obvious question of someone and someone got, I think a little embarrassed and actually like tried to like shush me and be like, oh, well, it's obviously this. And I said, well, I really like to ask the obvious questions and hear maybe some background information around something I might have assumed. And when I said that, that person then dove into their reasoning and lo and behold, there were insights, wonderful nuggets of information that we were able to pull from me asking that obvious question. So as soon as you can push back against the idea of feeling like you need to know it all and get really, really curious, you're going to open your eyes and be more receptive to new information and new ways of thinking. And I am telling you, that is such a helpful attitude to have as an entrepreneur. Because once you know everything, that's when you close off your mind and that's when you stop learning and growing. So I wanna leave you with this. The longer that you are your own boss, and I've been my own boss now for eight years, the more you realize that everybody's just winging it. And the market and technology is changing so fast that things are gonna change. The way you do something today might not be how you do it in five or 10 years. And instead of being resistant or fearful of this fact, it is so much more helpful to just accept that that is, that is how the world works. You know, change is guaranteed. And if you can stay flexible and fluid and keep that forever student mindset, you're gonna do okay. You're gonna be able to create a business that thrives, that is flexible, that is able to deal with the changes in the world. So if you're freaking out, welcome to the club. Honestly, having a good old freak out every few months I think is kind of part of the name of the game. But over time, you will come to see that they are not nearly as scary as you once thought. Usually it's fear trying to protect you, maybe from embarrassment, maybe from doing or saying the wrong thing. But the more you push back on that, the more comfortable you get in your skin and the more you're able to stay curious and ask questions and all the things that I talked about in this video, the easier entrepreneurship is gonna get, truly. You don't have to let entrepreneurship run you. You can be the boss and feel good in your skin. I promise you, I promise you. But you gotta push back on that fear, gotta push back on that imposter syndrome, and keep working on your mindset. That's the other thing I'll leave you with. It is so important, so, so, so important. So I'd love to hear from you. What are you freaking out about in the world of entrepreneurship? I love hearing from everybody because it gives me ideas around what kind of videos to make for you in the future, especially around the freakouts. And uh, yeah, go ahead and leave me a comment. I love, love, love to hear from you. And of course, please don't forget to hit that thumbs up button and don't forget to subscribe guys. I appreciate you.